I hope that you enjoy this compilation of my movie book paint overs. Just to say that these have been filmed over various time periods, so over the years. But, hope you enjoy! Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we're going to dive straight into the video because I've done many of these intros before and we're getting into it. So today we are painting over the movie cover of Goosebumps and I couldn't even figure out who this was written by. It's obviously adapted from the screenplay and it has a little foreword by R.L. Stein, and then it's based on the screenplay by Darren Lemke and the story is by another couple of guys so it's kind of a collaborative thing i guess it's just the movie story but i wanted to paint something over the top of it even though it is a book about the movie it's kind of a strange one here but i really like goosebumps i think there's just such fun like stories and i bet you guys watched the show when you were younger maybe and maybe read some of the books. I remember my sister had the one with the doll on it and then you press the button and its eyes would flash and it really freaked me out when I was little. We're gonna start off by scratching off the cover because it is a little bit shiny and this part always makes me cringe and I know it makes you guys cringe so I'm sorry about that. The reason that I'm painting over book covers is because I don't like book covers on books. I think they should be separate entities. I can understand like trying to market for people to read the book who like the movie but I think you would probably figure that out by yourself like okay this book is based on that this is my book and I'm painting over it so you know if you guys have a problem just uh, just leave the video simple as that I always have to give that little disclaimer it's kind of annoying really but I think most people tend to like these book cover paint overs and I really enjoy doing them so that's why I've been doing a few more recently on my channel so I started off by layering down a colour of the gouache from the Artex. So Artex are the company who have made these jelly gouache that I'm using. And they're also doing a competition with me and we're going to give away five of these jelly gouache palettes and also lots of alcohol markers to five winners. And then we're going to have a lot of other winners. So we're going to have ten smaller winners who are going to get a surprise gift. And then everybody who enters the competition is going to get a discount code of Amazon for Artex products. So that's pretty cool. If you guys are interested, um, see the link in the description. Basically, all you have to do is follow me and Artex and then create your own book cover. So you can paint the book cover, um, draw it, use digital, uh, it's open worldwide. You can make it in your own style or you can recreate a, a cover that you've seen. Anything goes and more expensive experimental the better because I've been really seeing some really cool experimental pieces and that really inspired me to go ahead and use some sticker paper in this piece because I, in the past I've done a lot of paper art stuff and I kind of haven't done that for a while so this time I was like why don't I combine the two things and painting over the movie covers with the kind of paper art and I realized I had this see-through sticker paper and I really wanted to play with layering effects with the see-through sticker paper but also um, the non-transparency, the non-transparent sticker paper I wanted to use as well. So I wanted to have this like old creepy house as the main asset of this image. So that was going to be like the main thing that we would see. And I've always realised that when I'm painting on books, it's kind of difficult to do a little bit of detail. So I thought this would be a perfect time to bring out just using paper um, art. So like the sticker. And I created this, I used watercolours to create the mansion feel and just I cut around this house, this old creepy house and I stuck it down in a place that I thought would look good. And I wanted to convey that and keep going with that throughout the whole image. And you will see that I start to use different trees and clouds and I think overall it's a really good fun thing that I've created and I'm really I really got into this one which has been I don't know at first I was like thinking is this gonna be that fun I don't know because it's a very strange one with the the book kind of being about the movie so it did I have a right to paint over it I felt a little bit uninspired by this one because I obviously haven't read this book it is like a book based on the movie I mean it's obviously for little children because I think it's middle grade I will have a little peek through it a, a bit later but yeah so I'm not necessarily creating stuff that is for the book I've seen the film which isn't actually awful it's quite entertaining it's not amazing but it's quite entertaining and I thought well 
I mean, I could be inspired by that a little bit because, or just like my memories of what Goosebumps would be with the monsters and the different things and the haunted houses. So I'm kind of indicating a haunted uh, Halloween theme for this one, really. Not necessarily what goes on in the book, but not necessarily too far removed from it that it didn't couldn't be something inside the book so I hope that makes sense <laughs> so I just wanted to have fun with this one really I really like the color scheme I think I've been doing this thing again where I'm using pinks and blues and I really need to try and stop using that because I think like it's become my color palette and I need to steer away from it I'm finding it really difficult guys but yeah so we use pink and blue on this one but we used a lot of green and I added some orange pumpkins which you'll see in the end um so maybe we're getting a little bit away from it I hope so I need to try harder really at that anyway getting away from the color problems here's the fun bit so I took some transparent paper and what I wanted to do was have like some water at the bottom of the image as if there's like a lake um, underneath this hill where things are coming up and I also used transparent paper and I painted like a white cloud of smoke, wispy smoke because I wanted to have like a see-through, I don't know, like this kind of cloud effect. It came out a little bit darker than I thought in the sense that it's like pure white and I do play around with the transparency of these kind of clouds a little bit later but this is the fun of this sticker paper I found it really fun to just mess around with and then kind of figure out as I went where I wanted to put each piece so I was just layering down gouache on top of these transparent water um, transparent sticker paper and then cutting out shapes and just playing around with it as if it was just I don't know something I can make up as I go along a bit of a mosaic and layering stuff I really enjoyed it so I did like a layer of this green to kind of signify maybe some slime like a lake of slime and I realized it was too opaque so I wanted to dull that down a bit so you could see the water coming through underneath and it would have that layering effect that I wanted and it didn't really work out as much as I hoped it would but I think it still looks kind of cool and then I go in later with another bit of a layering effect and I just I found it really fun to just keep building up this image as I went so I would be creating a tree at one part waiting for that to dry and then going off to the next bit of the image and waiting for that to dry and then cutting out bits and just figuring out where they would go, like placing them down a little bit and just seeing what would look best and if it would fit. And then if it didn't fit, what could I do? Maybe I could add like, I could paint directly on the book over the top of it or underneath it to give that depth of field. And I wanted to signify more that this was a hill going down. It looked a little bit flat at the moment. So I just painted a, a kind of a pathway or I lightened up that area. I do go back in and I try to um, develop the areas into little um, layers of maybe like bushes and undergrowth and things like that. And I think it really helps to find the distance within the image as if we're looking up from the lake at the bottom towards the house and we're seeing these plumes of smoke if they're clouds or if there's something on fire behind the hill, we don't know. And I really think this is a nice indicator of the kind of story that you would be reading if you picked up this Goosebumps book because it's kind of a horror element. I also decided I wanted a lot of pumpkins in the image so what I did is painted them out on a separate piece of transparent sticker paper and then I wanted to play around with the light coming through so behind it I wanted to play with um, having some orange light glowing from these pumpkins and I think it sort of works um, when I come to do it but you guys can be the judges of that. I want to do, yeah, like I said, indicate again the distance and the mountains in the background and how this is a hill and I really like this style of kind of circular shapes and I think that looks, it looks really nice in my opinion, I really like that and then just a kind of a, a plain, I mean it's really funny because the house is so detailed and sort of semi-realistic and then you have all this landscape around it which is completely quite cartoonish and I think, I don't know why, it just uh, the simpleness of it, it just works for me, I really like that. 
and uh, yeah, so just sticking down these sticker papers, just having fun with it for once. I think I've recently been putting a lot of pressure on myself to just do a really good job. And although obviously I was trying here, I was trying more to have fun with it. So just like putting down the trees and cutting out shapes and layering. It's just something that I haven't done in a while. And I realize I really miss this kind of like textual element of building something with my hands we're not necessarily building but you, you know what I mean like creating something from paper and building it up as I go and I just it's something I want to do more of I miss doing the paper art stuff that I've done in the past and I think it's really fun and it's it helps out a bit as well because if you're painting something and then you put stick something down you can always tear it off and it gives you the chance to make mistakes and I think it makes you more relaxed as you're doing it. It's definitely the most experimental uh, piece I've ever made for a book cover so far because I've just, you know, I haven't used paper art in any of the other ones and I haven't really gone this far with using my fingers to smudge the paint or just going for like different textures and trying to see if they blend well. So I think I sh should give myself a pat on the back for that aspect as I was saying before, the colour scheme is kind of the same as what I usually do, so I need to remember that next time to step away from it a little bit. I mean, I do have some greens and oranges in there, so maybe I'm being a bit too hard on myself. But I think if you look at my work um, all together, side by side, you will see definitely I have a bit of a tendency to be... Uh, too much into these 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 colours, have a bit of a bias towards them, so I need to step away from that. I really liked the way the pumpkins looked, it was so fun to stick them down and experiment with different faces. When I was a kid I was never allowed to celebrate Halloween, it was just like not really something that we did. And so just fun to think about what kind of faces would go on these pumpkins and things like that and I just really like the way it looks and I think it's, it's a fun book, it's indicating you know because Goosebumps is fun at the end of the day, it's not, it's scary but it's kind of like kids scary where it has that horror element but everything's fine in the end and I think this really shows through this book cover which I really like and of course we had to have some sort of zombie hand appearing up at the bottom of the lake so I used some transparent sticker paper again for this and I created a little hand coming out of the water and then I stuck it down and I painted over the top with the jelly gouache again just to indicate uh, this thing coming out of the water and it's maybe it's going up to the house where the light is on and it's just trying to hint at a story within the picture. So I just cut off the edges and then took the sticker off, uh, the washi tape off, and here we are, we're at the end. Hello everybody and welcome back to The Average. I don't know why I said it like that, that was a really weird voice and I apologise, but here we are. Today I thought we could do something, I always say this, we could do something a little bit different. We're gonna revamp this old book that I found basically in like a charity shop. So I paid a few pounds for charity to get this book, super second hand, super loved. But as you can see, maybe you can't see, it's super scuffed. Um, the cover is like a little bent, the pages are, you know, when it's like pulling up here. The spine is super broken, super. And there's loads of mildew all over the book. For ages, I wanted to try my hand at kind of rescuing a book instead of just painting over the cover. I am going to be painting over this cover, so disclaimer, all those people who are going to be like, oh my god, I love books so much, they're like my soul. Shut up, get lost. I'm sick of being nice to y'all. <laughs> We're gonna paint on this book because it's super old and it was gonna go in the bin otherwise, okay? Right, we're over that now. Um, I really like this book. I read it a long time ago and uh, yeah, let's get into it. I wanted to try um, getting rid of all the mildew. So we're gonna try that and we're gonna try and reshape the book somehow. I'm not sure how, but we're gonna try it. So stay along for the journey or leave. Lich. Just leave if it annoys you. Just go. No one's stopping you. Yeah, I've got a lot of sass today. Whatever. <laughs>
Hello, and welcome to the voiceover. I don't know why I said it like that, but buckle down because we're going to chill and we're going to watch some painting. And this is going to be a huge contrast to the uh, the angry vibes at the start of the video, which made me laugh a little bit, but also probably made people a little bit mad. So we're just going to chill now. Um. I want to start by speaking about the book and let people know that I did read this uh, probably about five years ago so that's a long time and the way that my brain works is that it just filters out stuff that I've consumed like if I've watched a show and I'll go and speak to some friends about the show like maybe a month later they'll be like and this bit happened and I'll be like I don't remember that <laughs> so that's basically how my brain works so you can imagine what it's like with this book which is kind of like a long book um, five years later I do remember like the base of it but yeah so I'm just gonna read the synopsis for you guys and probably give myself a little reminder too so this is Shadow of the Wind Barcelona 1945 a city slowly heals from its wall war wound I didn't I had to check if I was recording there a city slowly heals from its war wounds and Daniel an antiquarian book dealer woo that's a mouthful an antiquarian oh, an antiquarian book dealer's son who mourns the loss of his mother finds solace in a mysterious book entitled The Shadow of the Wind but then he sets out to find the other author's other works he makes a shocking discovery that someone has been systematically destroying every copy of every book the author has written. In fact, Daniel may have the last book in existence. Soon, Daniel's seemingly innocent quest opens the door into one of the Barcelona's darkest secrets, an epic story of murder, madness, and doomed love. Boom, boom, boom. So it's kind of like a gothic piece, I would say, because in the book, it really feels like the way the author describes scenes as if you're there. I visited Barcelona, but obviously I was never there in the in 1945, unless you think I'm really, really old, um, which you might. But it's it was a really good book. I remember really loving the book and wanting to read the second one, but putting it off because they were quite long. And I was in fact just like, Oh, I want to read something shorter first and I think the problem with me is that like I said I have the memory of a gnat so when I need to go and read the next book in a series I kind of need to remember what happened in the first one so I probably will need to reread this book if I want to read the second one unfortunately I believe that the author recently died but I know that he did finish the series but it's such a shame like because he was an epically good writer like the mood and feel that he created in the books was always so brilliant so let's talk about the book painting a little bit I went in with some block shapes basically I just wanted to block out what I wanted to paint I found an image of Barcelona um, a street and I wanted to kind of make it look like it was in the 1940s rather than recently. So I wanted to edit out stuff within my like um, imagery that I found for inspiration. And I just wanted to block out shapes and have a very kind of abstracty feel to it, but not too abstract. I just wanted to hint at things and I feel like this really has a sort of Spanish look and feel to it. I can't really explain why. I think I just get that vibe from it when I look at the final piece and I'm really actually happy with the way that this one turned out. When I first started it, I was like, this is gonna be bad and I'm not gonna show anyone because it's gonna be unfortunate that I painted over an actual book. Can I just say that this is the first book that I painted over that is not a movie cover book as well? So it felt a little bit like a sensitive issue, but I was reassuring myself knowing that this book was literally covered in mildew, which I think I managed to get rid of a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think, I think it made me feel better. And then in the end, I really am pleased with the painting, so I'm really happy. I think I might... I think I might get a box frame and frame it. Anyway, the point is, I was blocking out shapes. So what I was doing, I was looking at my reference photo 
and I was like squinting to see the darks and lights of the image and then just blocking out those dark and contrasted colours which really help to define where the lines will go next and help to find the overall piece and give a little bit of context to it as well. So as I was going I was just basically adding little areas, details but in really rough form and I really wanted that to be like the energy of the cover. I didn't want too much detail, I just wanted it to be a little bit more organic, kind of like reflecting the architecture of Barcelona a little bit where everything is sort of Gaudi-esque and uh, I'm not sure if Gaudi was actually alive then but you know the whole city has that vibe of just like existing I don't know if you've ever been or if you have the chance to go I would go to Barcelona because I've been a couple times because obviously I live well not close to Barcelona but it's a plane ride away from me like a short plane ride so yeah it's a really beautiful city and I wanted to capture that sort of spooky gothic feel that the book has as well so I chose these sort of neutrally dark colours with a little pop of light here and there to like kind of give the city that energy that it has and that vibe of like excitement that portrayals, portrayals? permits through the book. So yeah this was what I came up with and I hope that you guys like it and I hope that you don't mind too much that it's not a movie cover book and like I said if you do mind just just leave me alone. <laughs> I'm so tired of online bullying. I'm tired of it. Yeah, and uh, I'm bored of it too, so I'm not taking it. Um, So this was the overall look. I think I've probably said everything I need to say. Oh, to get rid of the mildew, which I realised I didn't actually say how I did that, is I just used like a nail file. They say to use sandpaper, but unfortunately I didn't have any. So I just nail filed it off, which is the same sandpaper really. And uh, yeah, it seemed to have worked. I added a bit of bicarbonate of soda to the pages to soak up any mildew or any sort of water, I guess, throughout the book. Water? What do I mean? Moistness? Ugh. Nope. Not saying that word. Any mildew throughout the book and I hope that that worked. I couldn't really fix the spine. I mean, I'm not a book expert, um, but I did try to bend it a certain way and keep it in like a little um, harnessy thing that I found and that seemed to help the book a little bit. But yeah, I think that this book was going to go in the bin and now it's received a lot of love and affection from me and overall a really, I think, a nice painting which I'm pretty proud of. I'm taking off the tape and everything but then adding a few more details to the book that I decided I want a bit more of that light coming through and a little bit more whimsy to it so the light is kind of like floating through the air but yeah that's the final look and feel of the book and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching me try to give a bit of revival to this book obviously I am no expert but I really do like the way that it turned out in the end and I hope you guys did too Okay, let's talk. I really loved To All The Boys I Loved Before. I really actually really liked the film and it stars an Asian American lead, Laura Jean, and I really like her character. I think she's bubbly and vivacious and full of joy and love and she's quirky and she's all good things. Now, do I love movie covers on books? No. And could this be considered a movie cover on a book? 
I thought so when I ordered it and uh, it even had the Netflix sticker and I realised this is not the cover from the movie because that is not the Laura Jean that I know and also this is not her bedroom in the movie. Yeah, I kind of lied a little bit in the title just to link back to other videos that you may have seen where I draw on books or paint on books. I'm not going to actually paint on this book but I'm gonna make like a dust jacket for it and an alternative cover. And I thought that could be like a fair compromise because I thought it was a little unfair to paint on this book when it's not actually a movie cover. If this is your first time dropping in, I'm sorry about the title. <laughs> it's not clickbait, I promise. All my other videos have been book paint overs and they are in playlists, which I will link down below. I would just like to say this because I never do. I apologize for doing this at the beginning of the video, but if you were like to catch this sticker set and this limited edition print of my Ghibli redraw, go ahead and go to Patreon because I'm only offering this until the 1st of December and then next month there'll be different stickers and um, prints. Sorry for having to self promote there. I am so in love with these brush markers. I think I want to do everything with them from now on because I just love using them. I even bought a few more and took some of the like partitions in the box out to add a few more colours to the whole box. So there's more than 48 in my collection which is a bit crazy actually thinking about it. Anyway I decided to use this and I used um, the Windsor & Newton brush marker paper with it as well so I made the little dust jacket out of paper and I think it was quite thin but it still works because once the colors on top you can't see the book through the paper it obviously isn't like the most perfect dust jacket but I think it definitely helps to put a cover to this book when I didn't want to paint on top of it I hope you guys can forgive that um obviously I already stated the reasons why so I won't go into it again if you haven't read or watched the films to all the boys I loved before, basically what happens, and I'll just give a little brief uh, representation of what the book's about, no spoilers, um, basically what it's about is this girl called Laura Jean and she writes a letter to any guy that she's kind of loved or had a crush on in the past and she writes the letter to say goodbye to them and then puts it away in her hat box and like tucks it away and um, to like help her process and forget about the boy that she fancied or liked and then over the years she's obviously accumulated a lot of these letters and one day they just go missing and you find out that they've all been posted so a lot of uh, stuff happens awkward situations with some of these boys and she has to kind of cover up why she's done this and in the story she makes a fake relationship with a guy to avoid an awkward situation with another guy and it's really funny and charming and cute and it's just generally like a nice contemporary young adult read and it doesn't take too much effort to read and it's just you know it's a nice happy story and I did really enjoy it I think I have a bit of a soft spot for contemporary um, books especially young adult I think it just it takes me back to being like a teenager and all those feelings and stuff it's just really nice I really enjoyed these books I'm currently reading the sec the the third one in the series I finished the second one the other a few weeks ago and I was going to make this like three books in one but I decided to have a go with just painting the first book and if everyone likes this then I'll go ahead and do the other two books and then we'll see them all together and I think that could be quite cute but uh let me know if you want to see that because there's no point doing it if nobody wants to see it you know so I decided to do a little bit of an abstract um kind of representation of this book because the original cover is obviously Laura Jean in her room and I didn't really want to represent it in exactly the same way as the original cover because then what was the point um, so I have like Laura Jean kind of sitting on cloud nine because she's always kind of up in the sky and her head is a bit, you know, she's a bit of a fantasy kind of person. She's always daydreaming and falling in love with people and I just thought it made sense for her to be sitting on cloud nine and then all these letters are just whooshing by her like somebody's let them go into the wind and they're all heading off to the different boys. And I really like it. I like the colours and I think it's really cute. 
I wanted to try something different with like using different inks and pencils and the alcohol markers on top and I think it really works. I never have I haven't actually tried this paper before so I wasn't sure how it was going to handle the ink and everything but I think it worked quite well. With the alcohol markers even though it's made for it it kind of left a bit of a texture but I don't mind that we all know that I like texture so I just went with it and added a lot more texture with pencils and stuff and tried to separate the areas and uh, make it like a really mythical abstract fantasy kind of illustration and I really liked it. I had a bit of a struggle with Laura Jean's face because I did sketch this out a couple times, um, like did a little bit of a thumbnail in my sketchbook and I like drew, drew out her face and I really liked the face that I drew in the sketchbook and this face looks a little bit, I don't know, it, it's not quite as I tried to do it but in the end it's not awful so <laughs> isn't that a bonus when we can say art oh, is it awful. So I added these ink um, washes of like swirling and like maybe some magical uh, thing is pushing these letters along to each boy and I thought it worked quite nicely. I had I went over a little bit with the details and I just wanted to make sure that Laura Jean sit or sitted a little bit better in this environment and she blended in a little bit well. And yeah, I, I really liked it in the end uh, and I hope that you guys like it too. Let me know what you think. It's one of those ones where it's so different from the original that it it might not be to everyone's taste, especially if you like the book, because maybe it, it doesn't really have anything to do with the book except for the letters and obviously the main character. But, you know, it's an abstract kind of um, idea of the, the sort of feeling you get in this book because it's so it's very romantic and lovey-dovey and uh, it kind of fits Laura Jean's personality she's uh, always quite lovely and uh, you know yeah always daydreaming like I said so I think this works perfectly and uh, yeah I hope you guys like it I used a lot of inks and uh, different mixed media and I just enjoyed the process I definitely enjoyed the Netflix film too, which I actually watched first, so if you're interested in finding out more about this story then give that a go, because it's actually quite a nice film, and it doesn't really like patronise like a teenage audience either, I think it does well with like kind of some hard subject matters, which is always good to, to see in a young adult kind of contemporary piece of work, because I think sometimes it can get to that where uh, it, it sort of dumbs things down for people and I think teenagers are a lot more savvy than a lot of people like to admit so I'm glad that this is quite an open piece of work. Anyway that's kind of the final piece and I will see you at the end. And there is our finished piece of all the boys I loved before. I really like this cover, even though it's kind of a dust jacket. I had the idea to make these little letters, which I think really adds something to it. I think it's really cute. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed the process and I really like the outcome. I think it's really cute and I think it totally represents what the book is about. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe if you want more content and I will see you next time. Hi everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we have not one, not two, but three books that we will be painting over today. I paint over movie cover books because I hate movie covers on books and I think if you don't like me painting on books then uh, you should probably leave because it does get worse and I've said this time and time again but yet you guys still managed to make your way here. I've never done a trilogy before so let's see how I do. I really want to make sure that it works out in a way that they will look good together like these three books do and I want to take you guys along for the ride so let's get going. But Steph didn't you already do um okay didn't I already do this cover? Yes, yes I did. I painted on this book cover and uh, I, to be honest, I wasn't totally happy with it. So when I saw that the new movie was coming out, I knew it was a good opportunity to revisit this and try to make 
something a little bit better. I did like the little letters on this, but in the end I didn't really like it that much. I wasn't super happy with it. So we're just going to do this and uh, also it wasn't really a book movie cover, so I felt a bit bad for doing it. I just had this little fake cover put on it and I'm going to try again with a new collection. Because this is three books, I'm going to talk about the book first, then the painting, and why I've chosen to do what I've done in each composition, and uh, yeah, hope you guys stick along for the ride. I thought I'd read the blurb of each book, so this one is To All the Boys I Loved Before, the first book. Here is the blurb. They aren't love letters that anyone else wrote for her. These are ones she's written. One's for every boy she's ever loved, five in all. When she writes, she can pour out her heart and her soul and say all the things that she would never say in real life because her letters are for her eyes only. Until the day her secret letters are mailed and suddenly Laura Jean's love life goes from imaginary to out of control. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much the, the story. It's a really good book. I really enjoyed that one. And uh, I decided what I wanted to do is because we spend a lot of time in Laura Jean's bedroom in the book, I wanted to sort of paint what I think her desk would look like and like the quirky things or the quirky style that she might have on her desk. And it's sort of similar to the way that the books look a little bit, the movie covers for the books look a little bit anyway, because I think the movies are actually really good. I definitely enjoyed the first movie. Like I said, I saw the movie first before I actually read the books because that tends to happen sometimes when you don't really know about a book. If a movie comes out, you're like, okay, I'll, I'll give that a watch. And then you realize, oh, okay, it's a book. So I've, that's my process there. <laughs> so I'm painting um, the desk and trying to keep the colors kind of different to what I'm used to doing. I've done greens and yellows here and I'm trying to paint all the intricate things on top of this desk. The problem I keep finding with these book paintovers is that the covers are super shiny on some of them, so I don't think I did a very good job of trying to get rid of that in the beginning of this particular book because it kept building up and then when it was drying it was slightly peeling a little bit and I found that I had that problem for this book and I kept running into it. So next time that I do the next book I really scratched the surface of it completely to make sure that I wouldn't run into this problem again. It's very different painting on books than it is on paper. I think people don't really appreciate that. If you've ever tried to paint on a surface that isn't really porous and wanting to absorb the paint, it's difficult. The paint moves differently. It doesn't really tend to blend out. It doesn't move as smooth as it could do on paper and I really noticed that doing these ones. I spent a long time painting these three pictures. You'll see in the third one that is really my biggest struggle, but that one is coming up. This one was kind of fairly easy. I was fresh to it. I was ready to go. I was excited. So this one was kind of a breeze to get through. I thought it was quite interesting composition that I chose, and I hope that you guys agree. But on its own, maybe it's not as interesting as it is when it combines with the three other paintings. But I think I really like the way that this one turned out. I was again trying to be a little bit impressionistic in my style so you can see that some of the perspective and stuff is slightly askew and a little bit quirky and I think that style translates through all of these covers and I think it really works. I don't know why, I just really enjoy that kind of blocky rough textured shapes and things like that on my paintings. I hope that you guys agree. So, To All the Boys I Loved Before was a really good book. I really liked it and I thought the characters were really um, cute and interesting. Obviously, all these books are a little bit um, YA, young adult, contemporary, so they're not too serious in their um, content. They're just a bit of fun, really. Like, there are some serious subjects touched upon, but nothing, like, too deep at all. So this is kind of a fun and relaxing read. If you guys are just a bit tired of reading high drama or, or stuff, you know, that's uh, really takes a lot of uh, emotional energy to read, then maybe you could give these a go. I would definitely say that the first book is the best book in my opinion. I think the other two books, whereas they're nice, I think they're more dedicated to just 
stretching the story out a little bit and because the characters are so good you enjoy hearing more about them and their lives. In the first book she obviously gets together with a man. <laughs> I don't know why I said that so funny. She she gets together with someone because it's a, a romantic uh, book and then in the next book we kind of see that story continue. In the first book it's kind of fun because she has all these letters that she was supposed to keep private and then obviously they get delivered somehow so you have that mystery of like who found her letters, how did they get delivered to all these boys and also you have like the drama of one of the letters being delivered to actually her sister's boyfriend. So it creates this really awkward situation that could come to light and uh, we throughout the book are kind of seeing where that would head. Um, her sister's gone off to university away from home so it's kind of her and this the brother the brother the sister's boyfriend by themselves and then she also gets together with another guy and pretends to be with him because to kind of push away her sister's boyfriend a little bit and show that she's totally over it but it's all pretend and in the end you know it's this big story of like twists and turns and I just think it's really interesting and uh, I really like this book I think because it has that hook of the letters and all these things happening you want to know you want that gossip you're like oh what's going to happen what, what conversations is she going to have with these boys it's going to be really awkward so you, it has that pull to it and then steadily as the second book comes into light it's more about her in her relationship with who she ends up with and then another boy comes into picture from the letters that was sort of mentioned in the first one but you don't really see him and um, then she becomes romantically interested in him and it's kind of like um, a love triangle so you're interested in that fact. I'll just read the blurb for you for the second book as we are coming up to it. So this is the blurb for the second one. Um, the second book is called P.S. I Still Love You. I don't really want to say maybe the blurb because I'll cut out bits in case you haven't read the book or the movies so that it becomes a little bit more mysterious. But when another boy from her past returns to her life, Laura Jean is, has feelings for somebody else and they send a return. Can a girl be in love with two boys at once? That's kind of the whole uh no tone of the story of the second one and i think you would agree that it's a little bit tired we obviously we've seen love triangles and you always know who the person's going to end up with it's so predictable but yeah you still like it it's still comforting it's still a nice relaxing read i did enjoy reading that one i think it was kind of slow in parts they have this whole thing where she goes to do a sort of internship I guess you would call it or something to do with uh, trying to get into college. She goes to an old folks home and spends a lot of time there working with the elderly and stuff and I felt like that sort of area it was a little bit tired and boring. Also there's this whole thing with the ex-girlfriend of her current boyfriend and how she deals with that which I think is obviously quite relatable to teenagers. But in the end, I, I didn't really find it that interesting. Like, the first book has all these intrigues of the reactions of the letters and who sent them and stuff. But then the second book is just like, oh, who's she going to end up with? And it's kind of obvious who she's going to end up with. But yeah, still a nice read, still comforting. And I'm, I'm probably just seeing as I'm on a roll with this, I'm going to talk about the third book. The third book is what I would say milking the story completely. I think the publishers of this book and the author, the publishers um, saw how well the book did and were like, yeah, write more of these. And I think the author was obviously very attached to the characters, so she wrote it again, another book, to continue the story. And not a lot happens in this book. I would say it's a bit of a non-story, to be honest. It's kind of obviously about Laura Jean branching out and growing up a lot and uh, that's pretty much the whole story. <laughs> Nothing that exciting happens and I kept waiting for that moment where it's like, okay, now she's going to do this and something big is going to happen but it never really does. It's kind of just like, and then she goes here and then she goes there and then does she get into this college? Does she get into that college? And how are they going to be together if she gets into college? And it's really like, okay... There's nothing, there's no high drama to it. You're just 
watching these characters from a distance basically and I think it is enjoyable to an extent it's nice because I keep going on about the characters but Laura Jean is such a nice character and you do you are invested in her and I think that is like the strength of the author it just shows how relatable and how nice she can make a character so you you care enough to read or I cared enough to read three books about this character even though the whole plot line and the storylines of the book steadily get slightly more boring as we go on. So this is the first book cover and I've never had a video where I talk about three books at once so it's kind of interesting to see um, these three paintings together. I hope that you guys enjoy seeing them. But yeah, this was the first cover and I wanted to make it quite plain, even though I think the first book is the best. I wanted to sort of ramp up the drama on the cover as we go. So this one's quite casual, the the colours are quite light, the feeling and the mood of the piece is quite airy and relaxed. So on to the next one, I wanted to create a bit of an image in this that is like a scene. So each book cover is kind of a scene from within the book. I really enjoy just making the 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 book covers just be like a background loosely painted. I'm really liking that style. So I wanted to do that for these three books. So in this book, they mention a old tree house um, that they all used to hang out with when they were young. So Laura Jean and her group of friends um, and some, like I said, um, the ex-girlfriend of her now boyfriend, they all sort of hung out at this tree house and it's mentioned a lot and they've buried like a time capsule under it and all these things and they head back there because the house is being sold so the tree house is going to eventually be torn down. And I was thinking like what would it be like to have just a scene inside a tree house at night where it's sort of like lit nicely by a lamp and you can see that people have put down a rug and hung up different things to make it more welcoming, maybe taken an old sheet from their parents' house and stuff like that. And I thought it would be really cute. I think this one, even though maybe it's my least favourite one of the three, I think this was the easiest to do. Maybe that's why it's my least favourite because I'm not super proud of it, but I do like it. I think I've reverted a little bit back to my old colour scheme that I've been talking about with you guys where I've done this whole purple and orangey blue thing. Yeah, and I'm a bit uh, tired of it. <laughs> but I, I did it because I've kind of fallen into that. And I think as well, these books, they do give off that vibe of these purples and blues. So I think the colour scheme does work in this scenario. Maybe it's not that it always works, but in this one it does. I wanted to talk about a little bit about the movies as well. I know that doesn't really make sense considering we're getting rid of movie covers, but I do really enjoy the movies and I think these books kind of have this thing about them that they are made to be movies. They work really well in that format. So I think the movies are really good. I really like the acting and the characters in them and I can't wait for the third movie to come out. It's on Netflix. I don't know if everyone has Netflix, but if you do, then I would definitely check these out. Maybe it's not your cup of tea. It's not for everyone. It is young adult romance contemporary, so it's not really like crazy good. You know, it's not winning any Oscars, but it's still just a nice like chill out thing to watch. A little bit funny, a little bit, you know, I just find them relaxing and comforting, I think. And I think that is the general tone of the book for sure. So we're on to the third book and um, I'm going to read the edited blurb, edited by me because I don't want to ruin stuff. Life is good for Laura Jean. Her dad is finally getting married and her sister Margot is coming home for the summer. But change is looming and Laura Jean can't ignore the big life decisions that she has to make. Where she goes to college for one, because that would mean leaving her family and possibly the boy she loves behind. When your heart and your head are saying two different things, which one should you listen to? And that pretty much sums up the whole book. Like, there's nothing really more to it than that. <laughs> I really thought in the book that she would go to Korea because in the advert for the movie, it starts out that she's in Korea. So I was like, okay, this will be really interesting because her mother is Korean, but the mother has died. So she's probably like trying to reconnect with her roots and stuff like that. And I thought that was really interesting. And I thought that was like going to be a really nice thing to read about, like her discovering like more about her culture by being in the country that her mother came from. So I was really looking forward to reading that, but actually that wasn't in the book at all. It is mentioned that she's going to Korea by the end of the book and it signaled that that's kind of like her final growth into herself. So I wanted to do a 
plain window if you guys can make that out at the moment because this painting was so difficult. I decided to do a painting window that she's going to Korea and that is like her final journey to becoming a woman. Okay guys, it is now the next day and um, I'm gonna tackle this because it's really bothering me. I don't know what happened there, it was like going well and then steadily went worse and worse so I'm gonna try and do something today. Um, I think I obviously put too much gouache on because it's kind of cracking in areas where I haven't really seen that before because um, usually I finish the book and it doesn't really crack like that so I'm wondering how to tackle that today but I am gonna make I'm gonna make this look good I swear I'm gonna try um there's also like a hair that's dried into this I don't know if you guys can see that but I'm like what why where <laughs> how where did that come from so can I finish this let's see let's find out um you'll probably skip to the end and see if I do because that's generally what people do but please stay and watch my struggle is real I'm struggling for your entertainment so if you know me and my channel, you kind of know that I do a lot of paintings quite quickly and this painting took hours. I did them all on Friday evening and then this one just, I couldn't get right. I don't know if I was tired or it's because the smoothness of the plane, you know, connect not connecting with the jelly gouache, it was so difficult. So I even went back to it the next day as you saw in that clip and I did this this morning and I think I do get there in the end, but oh, it was difficult. This was the one I was most looking forward to painting because I had this real solid idea of having, you know, just the plain window and Lara on her journey, but no, it was tough. I do really like the way that it turned out, but like I said, I had that difficulty of just trying to smooth out the paint on top of this kind of texture of the book cover, which is always difficult to draw on, paint on, sorry. And uh, yeah, it, it was frustrating. I did enjoy it in the end as I was slowly seeing, you know, the, the light through the end of the tunnel. I don't know if that's the saying, <laughs> the light at the end of the tunnel. And then I started to enjoy it, but it was a struggle at first. I wasn't sure if I wanted to make it blue, if I was going to try and make it grey like a normal plane, or if I just, because I thought that this was a really good mood that the sun is coming up in the distance and we're over the clouds and then on the plane it's all dark and you kind of have that emulated feeling of loneliness, but also discovery and adventure. And that was hard to get done. <laughs> that was hard to convey in a piece so I was trying to smooth everything out and try to make the window look like a window rather just than a weird egg shape and I think in the end it does look cute it could have been better I know that in myself like I know I could have done better but at the end I I do like it and I think for me it's like I've learned a lot of lessons through doing this picture and I do really like it and I think it does it, it, it's, it says a lot about the book, I hope. I hope that you guys agree with what I've chosen to do on all these covers. We'll see them in a second side by side and I think they work a lot better. So I was just going in and trying to do all these little fine details to show that it is a plain window. It's really weird because it has like this smooth inner circle and then there's a dark outer circle that's like a thin line and then there's the light hitting the actual plain bit where it's like highlighted so I was trying to copy that and uh, I think in the end it does look like a plain window so that's good at least. I hope that you guys agree that it does look like a plain window and I was just going over the clouds and trying to finalise all the little details of this one and then in the end I just uh, yeah I just said that's it I, I can't work on this too too much if I keep going then I might ruin it more so I decided to just let this one be and I think I do like it now that I've let my eyes rest away from it I do enjoy it so these are the three paintings together and I really like the way that they look side by side I think they really help amp up each other and push each other up I'm just going over all the details now that I have them side by side to try and make sure that they look like a collection like they are done by the same artist kind of thing. So doing all this outline in this dark navy blue and trying to connect each piece to the other, it was really nice to do. And once I did this, I could see that it was working and they did look good as a, as a whole picture together. I'm 
going over with this unicorn milk that I have. I have a video on this stuff if you want to hear about it, but it's basically like this iridescent paint and I wanted to do like little sparkly dots that go through one picture to the next to the next and I think those really help tie them all together. And I think it looks super cute too and it's kind of quirky and sparkly like the books are, you know, this romantic vibe. So I really like those final little details, I think they added something to them and that is it. That is the end of this process. We're going to take this tape off for some peel porn and uh, enjoy this. The reason that I don't do the spine is because I don't really like writing the titles across the top but if I don't do the spine then I can see what the title is on the side and I think it works best that way. Welcome back to The Average. Today we are painting over Dr. Sleep, the movie cover of the book. If you're new here and haven't seen my previous paint overs, I paint on movie covered books because I dislike them thoroughly and I think a lot of people have the same opinion. If you're of the opinion that I shouldn't paint on my things that I own myself, then uh, I would just uh, leave because this isn't a video for you. Okay, first of all, this made me cringe as much as it's making you cringe, but there was a shiny element embossed um, onto the book cover that I had to scratch off with a nail file and I know that's horrific <laughs> as I was doing it I was like what am I doing this is horrendous I had to do it to help the paint stick to the book cover and I think it really helped me out a lot so that's why I'm using this kind of I didn't have any sandpaper so I had to use a nail file which is really you know the bougie lifestyle that I live <laughs> Um, but yeah, so I scratched that off so I was able to paint and make the paint stick better. This time round, I decided to kind of handle out where I would be drawing on the book, um, painting on the book because I felt like I had a very specific design in mind and I wanted the composition to be exactly how I had thumbnailed it out. So I used a watercolour pencil to draw on top of the book and luckily it really made a mark on top of the book which I I didn't know if it was going to work or not so it gave me a sort of outline it's a very rough outline of where to paint and where each element of the composition was going to go because it was also a watercolor pencil it blended in nicely it just kind of faded away all the pigment which is a really handy tip that I picked up watching YouTube. I saw somebody using a watercolor pencil as an undersketch for a painting and I was like that's brilliant why have I never thought about doing that before because it just fades away the pencil marks and I think I might do that from now on. Even though I'm kind of used to just going ahead and painting straightforward, I think maybe I might do a little rough outline from now on using watercolour pencils. I think it's just a great way to navigate what you're going to be painting and stuff like that. Sometimes I make mistakes and uh, Maybe it's laziness or maybe it's just like the way that I like to do my art. I'm a bit haphazard, I kind of just go for stuff and it has its positives but it also has its negatives. So on the book cover I decided to paint a figure of a woman. Now it could either be Abra or it could be um, the villain of this book who is called Rose the Hat and I didn't want to draw because Rose the Hat appears a lot with this like top hat which is kind of like this magical thing that she has. I didn't want to draw that because I wanted it to, to be up to the viewer who maybe they're looking at and so it's sort of kind of a stylized abstract take on the book cover because the the perspective is a little bit off but it's kind of intentional because I wanted it to be as if we're floating through something and her hair has become like a night sky and it's floating up to the clouds and she's sleeping in bed but then the cat who appears in the story as well is appearing on her bed and it's not necessarily meet any part of the book or any scene because I've read a lot about um, book cover illustration and apparently the best way to do uh, a book cover illustration is sort of to hint at what's inside the book but never actually draw like a complete scene. Like never expect it to be something that will happen inside the book and just sort of hint at maybe the characters or things inside the book and I think that's a really cool thing. I always try to think about how that would work when I do these book cover paint overs. So I watched a movie last night for this book and I really liked the movie. It's a good movie, but it's definitely a sequel to Stanley Couric. I think I'm saying his name right. 
it's definitely a sequel to the movie it's not really a sequel to the book because the book is very different to what the movie comes to and I think if you're a fan of The Shining the film I think it's a great uh, add-on to it. I don't know, I wouldn't necessarily, I don't know, it doesn't really tie everything up for me very well. I don't want to spoil anything, don't worry, I won't spoil anything, but yeah, if you've watched both movies, maybe you understand what I think, because I think the fir- like the first two thirds of the film are really great, and I think the final act is a little bit like playing to the audience of the movies rather than the books, and it's very different to what actually happens in the book. And I know, obviously, like not everything can stay the same when they do adaptations but I think if you're gonna deviate so much from the original content I don't know I just don't think it works so much for me I really enjoyed the book I think it is a lot more thriller-esque than it is horror as The Shining is kind of pure horror like it's the first horror I ever read and I absolutely love that book so I was really interested to read Doctor Sleep and I did really enjoy the book itself I really like elements of it but I think it's not as good as The Shining. Maybe some people disagree, it kind of depends on your personal taste, like if you prefer a bit more thriller or a bit more horror. I love the universe of Stephen King's books because I guess it's all kind of the same universe and The Shining where people have the power to read minds but there's also a horror element. I really love that mixture of themes because I don't know I haven't I I guess I need to read more horror but I think that is what makes it interesting is how it has these magical elements but also this terrifying elements as well and I really appreciate that overall I really like the way that it felt to paint over this book I used the gouache the Artex gouache obviously and an ink pen to draw the outlines at the end and also I used a paint marker to just kind of define the stars in the sky in her hair I really wanted an abstract theme to this and I really like the way that I've built up the paint. I like that the under paint is like this orange hue so it kind of shines on around them and it gives a little bit of depth to this. I think I'm going to be using that style more frequently in paintings in the future. So that's my overall book. I hope that you guys enjoyed this and I will see you at the end. And I think that's the final piece. I really like the way that this turned out. I think that this really fits the story for me. I wanted it to be a little bit abstract, but also have some sort of symbolism of what happens in the story. And so I kind of drew Abra here, but it could also be taken as like, maybe it's Rose the Hat. I don't know. It's kind of up to the viewer's idea. I had an idea to keep like, maybe put the top hat in, but I wanted it to be like, maybe it could be either of the the women in the story and then I wanted to include the cat that is on the original cover that I read because I really love the the cat cover I'm obviously a cat person so I had to put the cat in there and yeah I really like the way that this turned out I think it's really cute I really did actually quite like the cover of this one the film cover was quite cool to be honest but it fits more the movie which deters so much from the original content of the book that I think 
deserve to paint over. and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel in case you're new here I'm Steph I'm the average artist and today we are painting over the giver um, side note I paint over book movie covers because I don't like book movie covers on books it cheapens the book for me but I do appreciate that some people won't like this so if you don't like this then just uh, just leave because it's gonna get worse from here. So The Giver is the book that I will be doing today. Probably a lot of you or a few of you have had to read this in school or in the past. And uh, yeah, I read this and I quite enjoyed it, but we'll get into that as I paint. Today I will be using this jelly wash that I ordered and used some time ago. 48 pieces of paint in this box and I haven't used them in a long time and I'm gonna see if they've dried out or not. Ew, the moldy. Okay, I'm going to be entirely honest with you guys, I haven't used these paints for a long time and they were kind of sat in the corner and the lid didn't quite fit on the side of them. So as you can see, some of these paints have gotten slightly mouldy, which is pretty disgusting. Um, I didn't really look at these paints so I didn't know like that they were going bad, but to be honest there's only a few casualties, this one being the worst. So I'm going to throw away the mouldy paint, there's a sentence I never thought I would say and use the rest because the rest kind of look okay and we have lots of colours to be able to use so in the end we have five cas six casualties and they are looking pretty disgusting but hey let's use these other jelly paints and uh okay there's another one here um and get on with it because i don't want to rest waste the rest so let's see how we how we go Absolutely rank. I didn't know. I didn't realise the lid was slightly off. I just want to assure you guys that that is only because I didn't shut the lid properly or the lid was came a little bit broken because I remember in the video I said that the lid for these didn't quite fit on. So that's why they got a bit mouldy but the other paints, jelly paints are fine. They don't really, um, I've never seen that reaction before so <laughs> bit of an odd one. So I got this really cool book of colour combinations for Christmas and I thought it'd be really interesting to try it out for this painting and I flicked through the book and it just shows you like lots of different colours that would work well together and I came across this one which I think is totally out of my comfort zone so I really wanted to try that to just get better at doing different colours and tones and stuff so I'm going to pick out those colours from this pack and try and mix them together as best I can to make the colours that I want and we're gonna paint, we're using those. So here is my colour palette, I've got black, Medici blue, dark Medici blue, yellow green, coral red, brick red and calamine blue, sort of. I mean I tried to recreate the ones that I could and then I added a uh, white in there and a yellow because I want to do the underpainting in yellow and then I sort of made what I could out of the colours that I had to match what was on the page but yeah i think this is a nice palette and there's no purple so i think hopefully it should be fine i still cannot believe the state of those paints please don't at me in the comments i'm so sorry no one is madder or sadder about this situation than me so leave me alone please <laughs> you can tell i have the youtube fear I want to talk a little bit about the book The Giver to further explain why I've picked this composition and the overall like design of the book cover and this subject matter that I've picked. So The Giver is a young adult dystopian novel by Lewis Lowry. Lois Lowry? Not sure. 
and it at first appears to be like a utopian but then it's kind of revealed slowly without the book that it is a dystopian and it follows a young boy named Jonas who is living his life you know he's loving life and it's kind of like they live in this society where everything like all your memories and emotional pain is just not non-existent they live in like this bubble of happiness basically and sameness later on we find out that each person as they turn 13 they receive a job so jonas receives this job of becoming the receiver of memory so he visits this old man who becomes the giver and he then gets memories from this old man and he realizes what pain is what joy is, um, memories of snow, memories of war, like all these different things just come to him and he realises that the society he lives in is wrong but they don't know that it's wrong because they don't have the memories or the wisdom to see what's in front of their eyes so they kind of live in this world of just pure state of being and then Jonas realises that he wants to change it this book is probably a really important book to a lot of people. I know a lot of people probably studied it in school. I never studied this, I probably read of Mice and Men or something. And then, yeah, I think it's it's a really good book. I like the ending as it is, but actually it's a quartet. And I think I might read the rest of them just to find out what happens. But as a standalone novel, it's a really good story and I think it really says a lot of things. If I think it it starts a good conversation about maybe looking into our own society and questioning whether it is morally right the way that we live and I think it kind of speaks to that a little bit. I thought it was a good story overall and I enjoyed reading it. I think it was interesting. Although I've read a few young adult dystopian fantasies by now so it wasn't anything groundbreaking for me but I think at the time it was a little bit it was very different to other things that had been written in the book Jonas and everybody in their community ride bikes so I thought what I would do is signify that with a bike that had been abandoned and at first it looks like it could be just laying there but as you look further it's kind of crumpled and abandoned and left to rot basically this is also an indication of something that might happen in the books. I'm not going to spoil it, but if you've read it, then maybe you know what I'm indicating here. But yeah, I really think that this signifies the books, the story for me in a way that doesn't spoil anything. And maybe when people read it, they can be like, oh yeah, that, may that I can see why the illustrator chose to paint a bike on the front of this cover. I wanted to keep the style of the illustration super loose and I think I achieved that. I did a little of like blocking out of colour and then I wanted to keep like movement within it to kind of signify the panic or the rush of emotions that Jonas might suddenly feel and I think it works really nicely. I want people to look at it and then maybe look closer or just at first glance think it's just a bike in the forest and then as they look more they see that actually it's um it's been abandoned and stuff i think it was really fun to paint i really enjoyed this process i th i think this is probably one of the first times i haven't really included a person on my book paint over covers i think so um actually maybe the goosebumps one is the other one that i didn't include a person and i think it's just um all the better for it. I really like the process of this and I think it looks really cool. I really am glad as well that I stuck to this colour palette and didn't try to add like purple which is within my comfort zone. I really went out of the box with this one and went with the oranges and like really light greens which I would never touch. Usually I would hate to like paint something with light green and orange and the yellow underpainting is just something that I wouldn't necessarily do so I'm really glad because I think it looks really cool um it's shown me that okay maybe I can do stuff without relying on that like the colors that I usually prefer to use and I know there's nothing wrong with having a certain color scheme or using a color scheme that you like a lot I know that but it's just within my own like development I want to 
branch out a bit and just, you know, do something a little bit different for once. And uh, yeah, I think that I achieved that. What do you guys think? I think this might be one of my favourite book covers that I've ever done. And uh, that's saying a lot because I, I do really tend to like what I accomplish with the book covers because I think that I really plan them out carefully because I know that I'm going to be painting on a book. I want to be really careful with it. So yeah, I'm really proud of this piece and it took ages to get all the details right. I do think I could have spent a little bit more time on the top part, but I also like the way that it does look a little bit abstract and it could be up to interpretation. I really like that the bike is super detailed and then around it, it slowly gets more and more like abstract and not within a certain like strict style. I, I think that works a little bit. But also maybe I could have spent longer on it. I'm getting this like feeling that I am not really spending long time on each piece that I do because obviously I have to film it for YouTube. So I'm getting into this um, state of doing things rather quicker than I should do maybe. So I'm starting to think about that and how I can improve upon that. I'm thinking maybe a future video of like a long form of painting maybe i would spend a week on one painting or something as a youtube video i think that would be really good to see what i could create with a longer period of time because i think i did this in a few hours and if i can do this in a few hours then maybe i can do even better in more hours or would it be the opposite would it be like i've overworked something because i've had more time on it i don't know i need to find out and i think that would be a cool video but we'll see i don't know if i have the time yet <laughs> I'm definitely thinking about doing more vlogs and uh, different things like that. It's been really interesting, uh, but it's kind of hard to make a vlog about lockdown. We are in another lockdown, which is not great, but you know, we're safe at home, so that's fine. Yeah, we're coming to the end of this piece. I'm just doing a lot of different final touches and details and that's it. Okay, that is the final look of the book cover. I really like it in the end. I'm glad that I went outside my comfort zone to try this color scheme and I think it really works nicely for the style of book and everything that I said in my voiceover. I'm really pleased with this one. I definitely think it looks better than the original cover in my opinion, you know, so this is my book, so I'm pretty pleased with it. <laughs> It's really not sliding, is it? Good morning, everybody. Morning? Okay. Uh, morning, everyone. Why did I say it again? Hey, everybody, and welcome back to The Average. Today, we are painting over scary stories to tell in the dark because it is a dark and gloomy day where I am, and I thought it was a perfect time to do it. Look how shiny this book is. It's going to be really fun to uh, paint that over. We're going to start by uh, scratching off the cover and painting over it with a medium base. I've got this super base that I'm going to try using today because so many people are like, hey, did you try putting down like some kind of medium to... Uh, make it easier for you to paint on the books and I was like you know I haven't so that's a really good point I'm gonna try that so I'm gonna do that today a disclaimer if you don't like me destroying books well I'm not destroying them I'm making them better in my opinion for my own collection my own book collection and uh, I don't like movie covers and books so that's why we're gonna paint over this movie cover and book because I think it's a little cheesy and uh, it's just here to sell the movie which is a little bit annoying because the book is a whole thing in its own right and if the book didn't exist then the movie wouldn't have existed so sort of the, mo the book is more important anyway I, I know what it's doing i understand but i don't like it <laughs> i do kind of like this character though i thought that the film was a little bit stupid a little bit cheesy and uh well obviously it's for kids but not really because they made it like super dark where people were actually dying and stuff so i don't know i liked it because the costumes were really cool and the, the visuals were cool, but that was about it. The story was a little bit me. So that's a little movie review, a little extra for you. So let's start with the paint over. I'm gonna start by scratching off this stuff. And I thought today what I would do is include a little bit of glow in the dark paint, which is this lip paint by Stuart Semple. And uh, I have a whole review video on it. Uh, I'll link that up here. If you guys want to hear more about this, it's really cool. So we're going to try and use that on the book today. Hooray, let's get going. 
So I start off by scratching off all the shiny, glossy glaze to this cover, which I do every single time, and it's always quite satisfying, but also like the cringiest part of the, the whole process, because it is like no going back from here. I lay down the base coat, and I have to say that it really did help, so thanks for everyone who pointed that out. Um, this is just like the super base that I used to mix um, pigments in so it was going to work as a base and it, it really helped to like just make putting the paint down a bit easier on top of the books. I'm using my jelly gouache, the Artex ones for this paint over and I really wanted to focus on using like a limited colour palette and mixing my own colours and not using the colours straight out of the, the pans basically. I wanted to make it just a bit more, a little bit more complex and rich in colour than the colours that you see in the in the pans there because the pans are a kind of pastel palette and I was wanting to go with a little bit more of a deeper colour palette for that because I wanted to do a room scene at night so I wanted to use more like darker hues and I wanted to use hues of the same sort of colour family so what I'm doing here is I'm mixing a dark blue, greeny blue and then making it steadily more green and lighter as I go on because I really like the idea of making the sky outside the window a light greeny blue. I thought that would be a really nice colour scheme. So I'm using this greeny blue and then I'm going to go in with darker blues and maybe a bit of orange here and there. So I start off by just roughing out where I want each aspect of the concept to go. So I'm just steadily putting where I think lighter areas will be uh, down a paint. So this will be like the underpainting of the overall painting. So all this will kind of shine through the painting that I do over the top to create like a sort of mood and feel. It will be like a little bit visible in certain areas. So it was important to get like the right colors there. I'm mixing the skin tones now for the main character who's going to be on the book. In the In the book, there's not really any main characters because they're just like a collection of short stories, like short horror stories for children. And there's lots of different characters and it's kind of, it's kind of goofy and some are kind of creepy, but it's, it's mostly just like fun and like creepy tales for kids. So I wanted to have a kid reading the book at night and in the doorway there you can see something sneaking out at her. I thought that would be a really fun way to connect with the book and sort of hint what it's about as if maybe this girl is reading the stories that's actually in this book. So there's a little bit of a whimsy, whimsical thing there where it's like she's reading the book that we are painting over, I don't know. <laughs> to talk a little bit about the artist, I was really inspired by the illustrator um, Stephen Gamel, who did all these amazing, like, scary illustrations for these books originally, and did all the covers, and then inside of the books there's these scary illustrations, and I thought they were so interesting, they're so loose and scary, and they are very, like, detailed and creepy for kids, I think, like, nowadays I think it would be a bit too scary for kids, but back in the day they were like, whatever, kids can handle this, I don't know, I think, um, I don't know if it would be published now because it's so, it is really creepy, but I think that works as well because I think when I was a kid, I was like, if I'd see something creepy, I'd be like, oh yeah, that looks awesome. I'm, I'm totally going to read it. And yeah, so I really liked his style of illustrations and I wanted to kind of emulate or pay respect to his characterizations of the books because I feel like he really sets the tone with his drawings throughout and they're kind of this sporadic painterly style, watercoloured, um, dripping, loose, uh, creepy style of characters. So when I come to draw the monster in the background, I take a lot of inspiration from him and just try to fill up the page with a little bit of a, a spooky outline of some sort of monster. It's not quite clear what it is, but yeah, that's kind of a, inspired by him. I took a while to draw the girl reading. I really liked the way that she turned out. I thought it was really interesting. It was a little bit difficult to paint the duvet cover because she's holding a duvet on top of her and reading with a torch at night, like, you know, the classic trope of kids reading at night when they're told to turn off the light and they have a torch and they're reading under the covers so the, the mum or somebody can't see the light shining through the door. So I thought that would be a fun, like, little thing to do. Like, she's reading the book, can't see, like, this monster creeping up behind her. 
and she's just in her bed reading with a torchlight and I thought it was kind of like a nice image and uh, I really had fun doing this. It, like I said, it was difficult to paint the depth of the duvet or make it look like she was lying under a duvet. I think I tried a lot to make that seem realistic and not just like there's something on top of her like a sheet. So in the end, I did spend probably most of my time making the girl and the duvet and the torch a little bit more realistic than I wanted to but I think in the end it looks really nice and I really like the way that she turned out. I did spend a long time on her face because I was a bit stuck. I was getting to that stage where it's like oh no this isn't working out and then I just pushed through it and it looked cute in the end. She looks happily reading there, innocent, not knowing what's coming. <laughs> So I'm just using those three shades of the browns um, and a slightly lighter orange hue for the skin tone because I wanted it to be as if the torch is reflecting light on her face and kind of lighting up her face a little bit. So I used that kind of orangey hue colour there. And then I used like a darker brown um, for the shadows and then I used like a really dense, um, really dense dark blue, black kind of colour for underneath the shadows to sort of indicate where she was and uh, that the underneath there is like underneath a blanket of darkness and I think that kind of comes across eventually. <laughs> to talk more about the book, I really enjoy the book. It's just fun, like some of the stories like I said are quite creepy but some of them are just so stupid and if you guys want to laugh then you should look up the, um, the book um, narration on YouTube because some of them are so funny because the, the the narrator just goes over the top for them but it's like quite funny because he just like screams at the end of some of the, the stories and you're just like what? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It's a little bit funny but I guess as a kid reading them you'd probably be a little bit frightened and I guess if you are scared of horror and stuff so maybe maybe it would be a bit scary but I do just think it's a little bit cheesy but I kind of like cheesy horror as well so I, I I enjoyed them they're just a bit of fun and uh, a bit of silliness some of them are creepy like the first story is about like this kid finds a toe random in the garden and just takes it <laughs> and then something comes at night and is like give me back my big toe you guys have probably all heard that story and I was like that is actually quite creepy like something slowly crawling up your staircase I think that's always the standard uh scary story though isn't it when you were young it's like something's coming up the stairs when you're lying in bed and gonna get you and it's like uh, you can just imagine something creeping up through the darkness yeah so that's like a classic uh scary thing when you're a kid also probably quite scary when you're an adult to imagine something creeping up the stairs but it's, that's kind of generally what these stories are like and the movie kind of tries to make a connection between all these stories rather than being just separate little short stories so it's a little bit different and I think you can tell that in the movie it's a little bit of a stretch it's like these kids find this book and unleash all these thing I think that's what happens it was so like <laughs> it was one of those films that you don't like it so you kind of forget what it's about I think I watched it like a long time ago but yeah and then I don't know, there's all these scary things like the scarecrow in the in the forest like kills this kid and he becomes the scarecrow. It's all like intertwined but it's just a little bit like, eh? <laughs> How is this related? I think it would have been cooler to have like short stories, a film of short stories, like that would be interesting but I guess that wouldn't really be a film. Maybe they could make a series of it, that would be cool if they actually made it like super scary and uh, well just for kids I guess would be more interesting. I think it, I think the film found it hard to find its audience because I think it was a little bit too scary for like 12 year olds but it was a little bit too like cheesy for adults if that makes sense. I don't know it was kind of like borderline needed to find the right tone I guess. Anyway the book's kind of fun and interesting the illustrations are amazing so if you can find like one of these books in a bookshop or something and just check it out and have a look at the illustrations or you can search the guy online as well and just have a look at his illustrations it's really cool and interesting definitely took a big inspiration and because i'm working on my horror comic now i was like oh this is really cool because it's so different to what i would do to indicate horror so it's interesting to see 
somebody else's take on that and I really like looking at like pictures of people drawing horror stuff and yeah so anyway I'm going in with the glow in the dark paint now what you do is you pour out this super base like I said and the lip uh, powder is basically like a pigment so it's like this glow in the dark pigment is pretty messy as you can see and uh, I just pour a lot into that super base and it comes out like a white sort of tinted -y, yellowish green hued white and uh, so when you're painting it down it doesn't turn invisible which or transparent would be a better word um, which I wanted because I think it's better that if it was transparent and then you take it into the into the dark it glows that would be more fun so I had to try and figure out how to use this in a way that it didn't look a bit silly so like I said I wanted to pay homage to the illustrator so I kind of took inspiration from his monsters and stuff which are all like droopy and drippy and so I was having fun with this I was just like playing with texture using my fingers to push around like the textures and the lighting of this glow-in-the-dark paint and like kind of taking inspiration of these gaping mouths that he has on his characters and like big eyes and stuff and then I went in with like some wetter paint and I was putting down splotches of this paint and then going away and using the hairdryer to suddenly push all the paint away so you would have like drips of this essence or this like glow of this monster dripping away from him or her or it and uh, I thought it really added to like the feeling of this character is just like this big mass of whatever it is coming through the doorway and she's uh, non not aware of it she's just reading so she can't see what's going on so it was really fun to play around with trying to make something look a bit creepy i haven't done that for a while like i know i've been doing my horror comic but i haven't got to the part where stuff is creepy yet um that probably doesn't make sense but it's like steadily builds up and then i think the last time i drew something creepy was probably in emily is burning my other horror comic and then i also did a it paint over so if you enjoyed this one you might enjoy the it paint over so yeah it was it was difficult to be like trying to draw something to look creepy rather than cheesy and uh i have such a big respect for people who can like create scary looking images because i think that's such a difficult thing to do to look at something and be like oh that's creepy it's just it's kind of hard to do without it being too silly or weird so i hope that this kind of looks creepy to you guys let me know if it looks creepy i think i do pull it off in the end but maybe i could have added a little bit more to it but I was running out of time because I had to upload this video so I kind of just went with this and I was enjoying how it looked so I didn't want to go too overboard with it in case I ruined it. So what do you guys think? That's the end product and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I am obviously going to show this now in the glow in the dark setting where I have to go into the hallway and show it in the dark. But uh, yeah, let's look at it in the light first to see how it turned out on all the details and stuff i really do like this one i think it's one of my favorite ones that i've done for a while let me know what you guys think down below and um if you want to stick around i'm going to put a little bit of my horror comic update at the end of this so if you want to see that then just stick around for the end of the video okay, so i'm in my hallway right now and this is how the book looks with the lights on and here's how it looks with the lights off as you can see it's <laughs> kind of fun um, it's just a little fun thing to add to this paint over and I think it looks so funny with the with the lights off and this like creepy dude looks scary. <laughs> oh. Oh. Hi everyone, welcome back to The Average. Today we are going to be doing another book paint over. Today it's the lovely Shadow and Bone and this appeared as a Netflix series recently which I haven't actually had the chance to watch but I finished this book yesterday and I'm getting ready to paint over this because I like the book. Um, basically I like to paint over book covers because um, when they have movie covers on them I think that they look a bit naff and they're just there to like sell the the show or whatever the film I really like this cover actually I think it's kind of cool it's not too like gimmicky and um, yeah it's it's all right but it's obviously selling the show which annoys me and I think that the actual covers of these books are really much better than this. 
but I want to paint over my copy of this and I'm going to get into it now. I really enjoyed this book because I thought it was like quite like low fantasy, just entertaining. It had a bit of like slow moments throughout the book, but I in general enjoyed it. I think it had a bit of like, you know, the same old kind of tropes of the love triangle and things. And I think I, I would have really enjoyed this book a lot more if I was a teenager. Not to like patronize teenagers, but when I myself, I'm talking about myself, I know I would have preferred this as a teenager. Not generally, so don't be offended if you're a teenager. Um, yeah, and I really liked this book. I thought it was fun. It had some really cool elements. I really liked the characters. And yeah, she's a bit too, like the main character's a little bit like, I'm not perfect, I'm ugly, and then suddenly I'm perfect and I'm not ugly anymore, and it was a bit like, oh, okay, <laughs> you know, so um, it was good, I definitely will read the next one because I want to see where the story goes, and I did enjoy most of it, I think just like the middle part, or the first part of the middle was a little bit slow for me. I don't know if anyone else found that reading this book, but yeah, it was a little bit like, okay, what now? Like, where's the drama? It was a bit like, and now I'm here, and it's all smooth sailing, but not really, but it, it is just a bit like, yeah, too generic. But I felt like it was a little bit like filler, if that makes sense, because I feel like sometimes with fantasy books, people try to, like, add stuff into the books to make them a little bit longer so they can have a, a trilogy. Um... Not sure if that's the case, but that's just what I felt. So about the painting that I'm doing, I went away and I did some sketches for ideas for what I wanted to do with the book cover because I had some good ideas because she is a map maker in the beginning and I thought it would be nice to have an idea of like having some sort of map and basically they have like these, I'm gonna say the wizards, um, they're called the the Grisha, but they're like, you know, mages and stuff. And um, each mage or Grisha has like a different clothing to indicate their ranking. And I thought, cause she wears blue when she becomes a Grisha, spoiler alert. Um, she wears this blue silk and um, this blue kafta. And I thought it would be interesting to like have this fabric in the background of a mirror um, and then on the fabric is like sewn in little details of actually being a map and I thought that was a really nice idea. In the story there's a significance around a stag so I wanted to have um, like the two stag um, horns in the mirror as if she's like looking at herself but the, the, the stag is like I don't know in, indicated in the mirror and also then the black so if you read the book it's very symbolic of like stuff that happens in the book and I'm really pleased with like this kind of concept and I thought that it would be really interesting to try and bring to life and I really enjoyed thinking about different ideas because I wanted to try and be a little bit more brave in the concepts that I created for this book cover because I feel like in the past I've just kind of done a girl on a cover or something like that not that I've hated the ones I've done in the past but you know what I mean um, I just felt like I wanted to be a bit more symbolic of what is in the book and represent it a little bit more that way. But it was also fun to like think of an idea of something different than other than just a girl. Obviously with my horror comic I had this uh, sort of mirror idea for that, for one of the co comics uh, where she's looking into the mirror and I really liked that um, imagery so I wanted to play with that a little bit more on this cover. So obviously she's not really looking into the mirror, but it's a mirror and we understand what's going on. In the story there's a lot of like glitz and glam when she sees like the palace and things like that. So I wanted to represent that in the form of the mirror being like this gold glinted thing. And in the book, I know it's kind of like a trope where characters look into mirrors and kind of describe themselves to you, especially if it's told from the first person. So like mirrors play a lot of <laughs> mirrors are a lot in this book so I feel like it would make sense to have like a mirror on the cover to represent who she is inside and out kind of thing and what happens to her journey and how she grows as a person 
and different things like that. I think this book was super fun. It's nothing like, I don't know, I wouldn't say it would ever make my favourite book list, but maybe it will expand into like better books because I feel like the first of a series is always going to be a bit like introductory and letting you into the world. The world building in this is really good and I know that she has like other series in the in this universe so like six of crows which is apparently supposed to be like amazing and also the king of scars series and i haven't really heard much about that but i think i will give those a shot because i've heard a really like a lot of good things about six of crows so i'm interested to see what that's about and i think they're all involved in the same universe so it'll be interesting to like see how that connects like is it on the same timeline is this in the past from those books and if do the characters appear in each other's books it'd be good to know and I think I really like that idea of like a writer being able to expand all these books to one universe I think that's really cool and it must have been really fun for her but yeah um so I'm using my jelly gouache for this painting and I think that it's working out pretty well for the book cover paint is sometimes if I layer too much gouache um, it does tend to flake a little bit but I've learnt to varnish um, the covers once they're completely dry and that sort of helps with it um, sometimes we do get some flaking like it's a bit random sometimes they're completely fine and then one of the other books that I have was flaking even though I varnished it so I think I just must have applied like too much wash in a certain area or waited too long to apply the varnish so it didn't connect I don't know for some reason I'm sure you guys will let me know because every time I do a book cover paint over everyone's always like you need a varnish it and I'm like yeah I know <laughs> but yeah I'm gonna varnish that um off camera probably because I always get quite nervous that it's gonna ruin the book um I also have like a couple of these book paint overs for sale on my Etsy if you're interested in that let me know what you think and also I've got my comics for sale they arrived yesterday so they're no longer a pre-order but they are actually for sale which I'm really excited about okay so that's the final look and I really like it I really enjoy like the the paper cutout technique even though it gave me a little bit of struggle to try and stick this down. I really like the way that it turned out and I hope that it comes across as if this is the fabric and then there's a mirror and then there's stuff popping out of it. I really liked it and I hope that you guys enjoyed watching this book cover paint over. <laughs> wow, that book really didn't want to do my thing. Uh, welcome back to The Average. If you're new here, hey, I'm Steph. I'm The Average Artist and we paint on books over here. I'm doing this thing where I paint over movie book covers because I hate them and I think they are disgusting. <laughs> wow, I went in hard there. They're not disgusting, I just don't like them compared to normal book covers. And yeah, I think we should just get into it because you've been here before and let's go. I have a certain soft spot for Artemis Fowl because I remember it was a book that I used to read a lot or listen to in fact on tapes, if anyone remembers what those are, when I was a kid to fall asleep and I really liked the book, I really liked the story. I always thought maybe Artemis Fowl will fall in love with a fairy in it and, <laughs> and then now I'm like that's so stupid as a 10 year old or however old I was I thought yes it's going to be a love story but no of course not that's just weird. I think because Artemis Fowl is posed as such an adult in the books but he's not he's a kid as well but he's a genius. Oh maybe I should go back a bit if you guys don't know what Artemis Fowl is about. It's about a boy genius who wants to discover the fairyland and the people who live underground in this network of different magical beings shall we say and yes um he manages to find one because he wants to help his sick mother so you think he's kind of like an evil genius boy but in the end there is kind of like a soft undercore of like a kid in there which is the overall arc of his character and I thought what I would do is, originally I sketched out an, a, a fairy flying out and I just, a fairy flying out, well like a fairy and I just didn't like the idea of that so I went back to the drawing board and I was thinking what I could do 
So for this particular illustration, I got a lot of inspiration from early 20th century like illustrations and fantastical things like that. If you look on Pinterest and look at these illustrations, they're so nice. Particularly, I stumbled upon an artist called Sidney Herbert Syme. And his art is like stunning and it's mythical and it's really impressive for the time. It's like a really, I don't know, enchanting way of painting. And he used lots of oil painting, which is kind of making me want to try out oils again, even though they scare me completely. Because his work was just so magical and fantastical. I wanted to emulate that a lot on this uh, drawing, painting. And I think I succeeded in that. I took a lot of inspiration from his work and then found similar artworks on Pinterest and made like a whole board and then obviously I made it my own and I sketched out different features that I wanted and I just went with it and had fun with it and I just really enjoyed this piece and I think it's actually one of my favourite book covers that I've ever done. I think I'm really starting to enjoy painting a lot more with abstract and underpainting and finding colours underneath and layering them up and then I don't know just making random shapes and then making them into something and I'm sure that as you're watching this you're probably thinking what on earth is she painting like what is that but as we go on and I develop the painting and concentrate on a certain area a lot more I think think or I hope rather that it becomes clear what is here and what the overall composition is. I get a lot of comments being like I look at your art and uh, it looks like a load of mess and then out of the mess something happens and trust me as a person doing it I feel that tenfold like I look at this for at least an hour into the painting like what is this is this gonna turn out good so I hope if you guys learn anything from me is to just stick with something. It always has an ugly stage and always has a stage where you're like, is this going to turn out the way I want? And yeah, it will. You just need to keep focusing on it. If you spend time on something, it's obviously going to get better. So all that needs is time sometimes. Of course, there are always the cases of when things are just not you can't save them so I think it's up to the artist's discretion to decide when what painting is going to get through the ugly phase or when it's just plain ugly luckily for me for this one I decided to keep pushing through because I knew in my head what I wanted and I had sketched out the overall composition and I had a lot of great inspiration to look at and think and that's kind of how I want to be that's like the level I want it to be at Obviously, I'm not saying that I reached that level because this uh, artwork that these people have done is far superior to my little book painting, but it's kind of so nice to look at other stuff and just think, I really like that about that piece of work and try to incorporate it into your own work. I know that might sound a bit like copying, but it's not because what you're doing is being inspired by something and you're making it your own. So it's like looking at a piece of landscape and thinking, I really like that about the landscape and then bring it into your own um, drawing and then making it your own, if that makes sense. It's all about using and inspire, being inspired by other artists. And I think this piece is such a particular style that I had to point out that yes, I was inspired by early 20th century illustrators, probably mostly American. But yeah, this is really nice. If you look up his work on Pinterest, then you'll see loads of images that sort of connect to his works. And you'll see, like, I looked at Irish mythology. I don't know why that just popped into my head. And I looked at Irish mythology and all the kind of old works that surrounded that. And it was really nice to just research something or just look at a completely different style as well, because I think I've been sort of set in my ways and to think okay how can i make something interesting how can i branch out and try to do something a little bit different really helped me to develop into making this piece which i think is my favorite piece uh, on a book cover that i've ever done i mean i recently did um battle of the wind which i really liked as well which is kind of a similar style to this in the sense that it's sort of impressionistic and it just reads as something whereas it's not like a perfect painting which I don't really like 
people who do like realism well not that i hate people who do realism i don't particularly like realism myself so that is something that i never really want to accomplish in my art because that's what i don't enjoy personally and i think everybody should like consume what they enjoy so for me i don't really like realism so much i mean I can have attempted it on some times and I wouldn't say that I'm very good at it but then it's maybe because that's something that I've never really delved truly into or wanted to be completely consumed by. So this is the overall painting and I hope you guys can clearly see what it's supposed to be now. I added the mansion in the background on a hill in the book it takes place mostly in um, Artemis Fowl's family home which is a huge mansion and I thought what I could do is just have these mythical magical elements around and these puff of smokes as if that's like the the fairies or the mythical creatures arriving because I think they teleport in so this is like my interpretation of that so it's sort of signifying what could be in the book rather than just showing a clear scene which is always a piece of advice that I stumbled upon and want to remind people of is when you do a book cover you don't want to have a particular scene in your head you want to keep it fairly generic so that it interests the audience but also makes them want to pick up the book because of the content on the cover but yeah that's it And that is the final look of Artemis Fowl and yes I think this is probably one of my favorites that I've ever done I'm not sure what do you guys think like do you think this is the one of the best ones I really like it and I really think it sort of depicts the magic and the drama and kind of the spirit of the book a little bit more than having a picture of the guy who plays Artemis Fowl although that was okay it's just that i really like this book and i think it looks really cool hi guys welcome back to the average today we're going to be drawing on a nava book and this is one of my favorite books that i've read and i really really like this book so it was always a difficult choice for me to paint on this. I know that the cover kind of resembles the actual book cover anyway so it's not that bad of a book cover. I just think like I you know as we say on this channel we hate movie covers on books because I think it's just kind of a cash grab and it kind of takes away something I like to think of films and books as separate entities of the same strand if that makes sense to anybody but me. Lots of people agree, lots of people don't agree so if you're one of those people who don't like me painting on books just go away. <laughs> It's that simple. Okay, so we're painting on The Hate You Give today and yes, like I said, it's one of my favourite books. I think it's really well written. It has a really strong, distinctive style and voice and I really appreciate that. Like, the character-driven story is something that I really appreciate and it's a really good book. It's really interesting and yeah, like I said, it's really well written. What happens in the book is we follow the main character, Star Carter. It's all from her perspective and she witnesses um, her friend being shot by a police officer, which is a very poignant subject matter it talks a lot about society and and race issues in America and I think it's really well done I obviously can't really say much on the subject matter except for what I've read in this book and what I know generally in the news and stuff but I've never witnessed or experienced anything like this myself obviously so it's good to read this and kind of get a perspective on it and yeah it's a really good book so I like I said I'm apprehensive and I'm a bit worried to draw on it this copy is a little beat up so I think what I want to do is because I want to do a kind of realistic portrait of Star that I think I'm gonna paint on a different sheet of paper and stick it on now I've done this before for a couple of books I've painted over so I think it's fine I think it works well because if I want to do watercolor or like watered down gouache then I can't really do it on this cover so I think what I'm gonna do is do it this way but it's kind of the same thing I also think if I mess it up I can just peel it off as well so there we go there's a little bonus for, for the fear that I feel for painting on this one so I started to approach this like any 
of a painting that I would do where I did some preliminary work. I did some thumbnails and things in my sketchbook and then I took it over to this piece of paper and kind of re-sketched it out and designed it. Yeah, just uh, penciled everything out before I started to paint over with the gouache. The gouache is kind of old and crusty now. <laughs> That's the update on that, It's it, it still works, but it's not as good as it was when I first got it. It works more well as a watercolour, but it's still quite opaque when I layer it down, so it's still pretty good. I've had it for, you know, a few months now, so it's going strong, and I'm pretty pleased with it still, so I think once I run out of this, I'll probably order some more. And then, yeah, I just went in and I sort of treated it as a watercolour painting rather than gouache and I really enjoyed this process because I wanted to be a little bit experimental with my style and just have kind of an emotional connection with this picture because this book is so meaningful and when I read it, it, it just meant a lot to me. I don't, like not because of any connection that I would have with the subject matter obviously but just because it was so emotionally strong and poignant and well written that I just felt like I really wanted to do a good job with this paint over so I was very intimidated at first and as I was getting into it I was really just trying to let go and be loose and try to have kind of a loose expressive style and try to emote a lot of feeling from the character towards us I had this idea of having her in the foreground and just facing the audience and then maybe a crowd of protesters behind her all holding candles signifying a lost life or just, you know, the protests that they're on or a march or something. Um, this doesn't really necessarily happen in the book but I think I read that with book covers it's a good idea to be more abstract with them than actually portraying a scene that happens in the book because you don't want to give too much away and you just want to hint at what the book might be about so that's kind of something that I try to follow when I do my book cover paint overs because I want to act like as if oh this is going to be a cover that would be on a book in a shop like I don't know why I just have that in my mind like as I'm going as if I want to portray I want to represent what this book is about and I hope I it did a good job here I, I really like this idea of just hands behind her like no faces or anything as if it's sort of a fantastical place as well like this darkness surrounding her and then just the lights and people hopefully sending a sort of powerful message and yeah like I said I was intimidated and I think that the idea that I had works well if I can say that and I think I think in the end I really like the way the painting came out and once I sort of loosened up with the imagery and painting and relaxed a little bit and enjoyed what I was doing then that's when I really started to connect with the piece and it just started to make sense and it started to feel like it looked good to me and I just yeah I overall I think that when you're intimidated by something it can be the pressure can weigh you down to the point where you don't really want to do it and if you're constantly thinking these negative thoughts as you're drawing or painting then it's going to show in the picture so I just popped on like a podcast and was listening to that and listening to music and stuff and trying not to think too much about like how I'm going to show this picture to everyone because um I don't know if you guys follow my YouTube a lot but I mean if you're new here I do a lot of these book paint overs and sometimes I get really bad negative reactions and usually I don't really mind that much and sometimes it does get to me a little bit but usually I'm like no it's fine whatever you know people are always going to have negative opinions about you that you can't help that but then when I approached this book I was like oh this is such a meaningful book and it has a really powerful message and so I didn't want to offend anybody and I think people see it me painting on books as if I'm taking ownership of a piece of work but I'm only painting over something that I own and I'm only expressing my opinions and my thoughts through art so if somebody is offended by that it's kind of like well you can have that feeling and you can take that with you but you can't put that on me because that's nothing to do with me like this is my my work and yeah, so I was a little bit intimidated, like I said. But I think overall, I really like the way that this turned out and it really surprised me because I thought I thought it was gonna be a mess because of the way, the pressure that I was feeling and I'm trying not to let things get to me and yeah, they're not really, to be fair. Like, I think I just had a couple of moments when I was like, you know what, screw you. <laughs> I don't care what you think about my book paint overs, but yeah. So if you enjoyed this paint over, 
I have a lot more other paintovers that you can go and look at. Maybe I think a lot of you found me through my book paintovers anyway, so I'm not going to stop doing them. And I really enjoyed this one. So there we go. That's it. I read the books and then I paint over them. And I think it's a really good way to discuss books and art as a whole. And that's something that I really enjoy. I enjoy reading, writing and creating art and doing comics and stuff, which you could argue is a juxtaposition of visuals and written word. For me, it makes sense to make my channel all about this stuff. That's why I do this kind of thing. And I really enjoyed this one. And I hope that you did too. Okay guys, that's it. That's the final paint over. I hope that you liked it. This is how it looks now with it on the cover. And I think it turned out pretty cool. I'm very happy with it. And...